All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Real Exoplanets mod, which is being made by user Andy Draws Pretty Pictures. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is several lovely new star systems for you to go and explore with a number of gorgeous planets. And what makes it even better is, as the name does suggest here, they are real exoplanets based off of our closest celestial neighbors of systems like Proxima Tauri and Tau Ceti, which is pretty cool. They're all made to be as accurate as possible to our current scientific understanding, with of course some artistic liberties taken here and there. So let's uh, jump into the tracking station and have a look at what we do get. And while zooming out, I should of course uh, mention that this, well, is a planet pack which means it is using Copernicus and that does mean you are still going to be in the older version of a 1.7.3 for Kerbal Space Program if you do want to use it. I should also mention that I am of course in the vanilla stock version of the game, but if you like using the real solar system mod, this is compatible with it and it has all the files in the folder so that if you are using that it will properly scale all of these star systems to match with, well, reality rather than the scaled down versions we have in vanilla, which is pretty cool. And another fun fact here, got a lot of things to dump out here at the the, uh, beginning, you'll notice the placement of all the solar systems may seem a bit willy-nilly, but no, in fact, if this was, say, our solar system, Trappist-1 is in fact over in that direction, and I love that little extra bit of detail there where the mod maker has put all of these solar systems in their correct orientation and sort of angle and inclination, etc., from our own world. That is pretty darn cool. So let's uh, zoom on in and click on Elu so that once we tab out, we can go to the first of the stars in this pack, which is, of course, Proxima Centauri, which is a 9,328 kilometers in radius here with a gravity of 169.5 Gs with an atmosphere present, but it, you know, it's that whole star atmosphere you really don't want to go and visit. All in all, a good nifty little star with one singular planet orbiting around it, which of course, if we tab over that, is Proxima Centauri B, which is 697 kilometers in a radius with a gravity of 0.95 Gs and does have an atmosphere for when you visit. And as you can see here, it's a pretty cool terrestrial planet with some ice caps on both poles, which is pretty awesome. And on the atmosphere note, I gotta admit, for this particular planet, I don't know if we have the scientific data saying if it is uh, or has rather potentially an atmosphere or not. I'll have to look that up later but in this mod pack all of the planets have atmosphere it seems to be one of the artistic liberties that the mod maker did take here every one of them does which seems highly improbable which is why i'm going with that artistic license there uh, but yes do keep that in note in fact i'm not going to be mentioning the atmosphere on the rest of the planets as we tab through because again uh, they all have it here in this pack so let's tab over to our next star alpha centauri a, which is a much larger star with a radius of 81,171 kilometers in radius, with a gravity of 20 Gs, with, of course, that atmosphere, which I just mentioned I wouldn't mention, and I've already wrecked that. Awesome. But as you can see here, a lovely, very bright white star, which, uh, of course, when you are in the game, looks more like this because of just how the camera functions, but zooming in closer, cool. Now, next we have, of course, and actually I should zoom out before we do tab over because, well, the whole binary thing here, we have Alpha Centauri B, which is a bit smaller, nearly half the size, at 57,223 kilometers, with a gravity of 33.2 Gs, and again, just a nice, a bright a little star working in concert with its a brother there. And again, zoomed in closer, nice and white, and as you pull out, it is that more sun flare sort of orange that we tend to get in the game. And all in all, I just do like it. It's quite cool that they both have that fun little orbit. Now, moving on to the next of our stars, we have 
Barnard Star, which is much smaller comparatively at 12,966 kilometers in radius, with a gravity of 102.7 Gs, and once more you can see just a nice and nifty little star here, and if we do zoom out, we do have a planet around this one, which is Barnard B, which of course is 1,000 kilometers in size here, with a gravity of 1.3 three five g's and uh looks gorgeous i honestly think this may be one of my favorite planets actually there's one more that i think i like more but uh this is just so cool it looks kind of like a marble countertop with all the cool uh, differentiation and colors between the regions there it's just a fun looking terrestrial planet I do quite enjoy it. Now, after this, though, we're moving on to another star system, which is, of course, Tau Ceti. And this star is 52,461 kilometers in radius, with a gravity of 34.5 Gs, or 34.55, rather. And if I zoom out here, not only, again, is it just a nice nifty little star, well, actually quite large, if we zoom out, we have quite a few more planets for us us to go and enjoy which is pretty awesome so if we zoom back in and tab over to the next one we have Tau Ceti G which is 776 kilometers in size with a gravity of 1.66 and this this is the one that I actually do like the most that I was just kind of debating about a moment ago when we were at Barnard B and uh, yeah as you can see it's just a cool deadly looking lava world I like that for some reason. There is actually a ringed world later on, which you'd think I'd be, you know, liking that one the most, but no, I don't know. Something about a cool lava world just makes me happy. It's very cool looking there. Now, moving on to the next one, we have, of course, Tau Ceti H, which is 854 kilometers in size with a gravity of 1.93 Gs, and again, looks amazing. It's another nice lava world. I, I like the other one better for reasons I can't quite uh, say why, honestly. But yeah, this one's very cool with nice rivers of lava all over the place. It is pretty darn cool. In fact, well, it's really the opposite of that, but yeah, you know what I mean. And then after that, we have, of course, a Tau Ceti E, which is 1,182 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 1.85 Gs. And as you can see here, it's quite a bright little planet, very reflective. We're actually going to get to a planet here in a little bit that's even more reflective, which uh, is actually kind of a little bit of a pain. But all in all, though, this is still a cool planet. And this one, actually, I think does fit quite nicely with calling it cool because, well, yeah. <laughs> And then moving on from uh, this one, we have a Tau Ceti F, which is the gas giant here, which is pretty awesome, with uh, 1,678 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.76 Gs, and as you can see here, a very faint ring, which I do love, but still the lava world wins for me on this one for some reason. But yeah, still a very awesome planet there. And again, who doesn't love a good ring? Very faint, but very nice. And then after that, we're moving on to yet another star system where we have Tea Garden Star. Which is smaller than the previous ones we've encountered here at 8,402 kilometers with a gravity of 135.9 Gs. And once more, it's just a uh, nice and nifty little star there. A very, very nice indeed. And this one, if we zoom out, does have two planets for us to enjoy. The first of which is... Tea Garden B, which is 601 kilometers in size with a gravity of a 0.97 Gs and is kind of weird. I like it though. I like it. It's got this weird dichotomy between the continents here and whatever that is in the middle. I, I, act I actually meant to look this up before starting the video, but didn't have time to. What is this supposed to be? Sadly, there's nothing on the info panel here. It just has dot, dot, dot. But, um, yeah, we seem to have some sort of ice continent on one end, some sort of terrestrial continent on the other, and then whatever this is. 
It amuses me, and thus I like it. Now, moving on from here, though, we then have Tea Garden C, which is 618 kilometers in size, with a gravity of 0.95 Gs, and uh, another very awesome planet, very terrestrial in nature from this side, but if we turn there, it's all ice on the other half, and I do love just all the details along the edge as it, you know, goes from one end to the other. You got a lot of cool looking crevasses, etc. And just the details of all the uh, pot marks on the planets from asteroid impacts is pretty awesome. I do really like this one. It is pretty cool. Now that's the, it for Tea Garden though. So uh, moving on to the final star system here, which is Trappist-1, where the star here is 8,005 kilometers in size, with a gravity of 166.5 Gs, and once more, just a nice nifty orangey star, but if we zoom out here, ho oh, ho, oh boy, we have a lot more planets. In fact, it is, of course, as you can obviously see, the largest of all of the solar systems in this mod pack. And it's beautiful. There are some cool planets here. So let's tab along to the first one, which of course is Trappist-1b, which is 679 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.8 Gs. And this is that one I was mentioning earlier that is super reflective. I just... Oh, it's almost too reflective. It is, of course, very close to the star of Trappist-1. And on the back side, you know, it looks quite beautiful. But on the front, all you can see is brightness. So it's a little bit awkward, in my opinion, but still a pretty awesome planet. Now, here's the thing, though. That reflective nature gets a bit more interesting with the next planet, which, of course is Trappist-1c, which is 663 kilometers in radius, with a gravity of a point and 0.95 Gs, and, um, yeah, if you look at it from this angle, it almost looks like another star. It kind of weirds me out. But again, from the other side, uh, you know, an interesting looking texture to the planet. It's a little bit more bland than a lot of the planets we have here, but yeah, that brightness on that side, it really just, it, it kind of takes me out there. It kind of takes me out. But that all changes, though, once we move to the next planet of Trappist-1d, which is gorgeous. And it is 475 kilometers in size with a gravity of 0.48 Gs. And I love it. It's another one of those sort of ocean ice worlds, and it's just very, very awesome. I mean, again, a lot of great detail on that ice shelf where it does turn to water, but I just really love this sort of odd... I, I don't even know what to call it, but as it uh, goes around to this side of the planet, it just seems to dig further and further along. I mean, this side, it's pretty a pretty set path of where's ocean, where's ice, but then there, kind of... <laughs> Just kind of carves a wedge. I like that. It's it's very very neat. I, I think this is why this is also one of my favorites of these planets. I got a lot of favorites in this one. They are that good. And then of course next we move on to Trappist One E, which is 551 kilometers in size with a gravity of 0.92 Gs, and is one of the more interesting planets again here from this side. A fairly typical terrestrial planet from the other side. Again we have just a giant world of ice with that cool detailing between the two but this time around we've got some lakes we've got some rivers and some interesting topography around which is really rather awesome it's it's definitely one of my favorites in this particular solar system now moving on from this we of course have Trappist 1f, which is 634 kilometers in size with a gravity of 0.84 Gs and is gorgeous. It's also a water world. The entire thing is an ocean. In fact, uh, the, this one actually does have an info panel. Apparently, the whole thing is a 2,000 kilometer deep ocean covered with loads of clouds. So if you're going to visit this one, make sure to bring a boat. 
Now, after this, we have a Trappist 1G, which is 695 kilometers in size with a gravity of 0.86 Gs and is kind of the exact opposite of the previous one, where this is just a giant ball of ice rather than a giant ball of water. And uh, still pretty awesome, though. Again, a lot of nice texturing on this. It's very, very neat planet. And finally, we have... Trappist 1H, which is 468 kilometers in size with a gravity of 0.55 Gs. And uh, not the ice that we were seeing on a lot of the planets here in the Trappist system. This one is just purely a terrestrial world, but has uh, just again a lot of great detailing all over the place. I love all the craters all over and just looks good. But yes, uh, that is it for all of the various solar systems that we have added by this a lovely mod so if we do jump over to my real exoplanets ship that i have in orbit of course around my favorite of the lava worlds it's just just a neat little planet pack it adds a ton of new planets and star systems for you to explore and with their real world nature to them it adds an extra bit of fun to things and so overall i'd definitely recommend this pack there are as i said a couple of oddities especially with those highly reflective planets in trappist but all in all very much worth it and the awesome planets far outweigh the kind of odd ones and it's just a fun planet pack to enjoy so if you'd like to check it out for yourself which i'd certainly recommend you go and do you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual but that is gonna be it for today my friends i hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one